Silver Doctors is taking gold, silver, and finance news to the next level. In addition to the once-weekly SD Weekly Metals and Markets Wrap, Silver Doctors will be producing daily podcasts with top financial experts and market makers in the gold and silver space. Joining the Silver Doctors team is Elijah Johnson from Finance and Liberty, who will be hosting these new interviews. But that's not all. Silver Doctors will also be posting some of the latest and greatest internet videos pertaining to finance, economics, and precious metals. If you aren't already a subscriber to the Silver Doctors YouTube channel, become one today for free and receive some of the best commentary in the precious metal space daily. SilverDoctors.com Hey everyone, this is Elijah Johnson with SilverDoctors.com and with us today is Bix Weir from RoadToRuta.com. Bix, thank you so much for joining us today. Hey, thanks for having me on, Elijah. All right. Well, I'd first like to discuss about what is happening with precious metal prices right now. What is your perspective about the pullback we've seen recently? Well, my, my perspective for the last you know eight years it has been the same. You need to have physical silver in your own hands out of the market because they, the, the people who control it, can set the price in it where they want with a click of a mouse. They can set it to zero or they can set it to a million dollars an ounce. That's how much power these guys have. So, you know, it's very difficult to even look at the prices knowing that in the back of your mind, it's like, these are all fake. There's nothing real about this and there haven't been real prices for decades. So, yeah, it's, uh, you know, they'll put it wherever they want. They they love to kill sentiment, which they've been doing since, you know, they brought up sentiment when they took it from $20 to $50 and, and they're killing sentiment, you know, bringing it down from 50 to whatever we are below 20 now. And yeah, it, it's the game they play. And unless you're out of the electronic market and prices don't matter to you, you're going to have a heart attack every time they play their game. So yeah, nothing has changed there. What is your perspective on, are we seeing any shortages right now in the physical market? Well, the shortage is an, it's an interesting concept. According to the U.S. Mint, we have been in a shortage since 2015 when they put uh, all U.S. Uh, Silver Eagles on allocation. You know, they, they just lifted it in July. But, but the very definition of a, of a shortage, according to the U.S. Mint, is that they are required by law to provide coins to the public in quantities sufficient to meet public demand. That is the law. They changed the law after I gave them a hard time a few years back that they weren't following the law. They changed the law so that uh, the Treasury Secretary gets to decide whether or not they're meeting demand. But it doesn't change the law that they still have to meet demand. He can lie and say, yeah, yeah, we're, we're meeting demand, but they're not doing that. They have put it on uh, American Silver Eagles on allocation for over a year, and they just recently took it off, which is great. But they are saying, the U.S. Mint is saying that for one year we were in a, a supply deficit. Um, and deficits don't happen. Shortages don't happen in free markets because price always comes up to meet demand. And so <laughs> – it is completely artificial. Anything, if they keep the price too low and everybody buys up all the silver, that is not the free market working. That is a, a distortion of the free market, and that's what the U.S. Mint does. And the U.S. Mint obviously is the provider of the largest, most popular coin in the world, the one ounce silver uh, eagle. So, yeah, um, I, I don't think we're seeing much of a uh, shortage on the retail side because of what the U.S. Mint has done over the last year. You know, because they were allocating less silver eagles, that means there's more silver available for other other uh, types of coins. So on the retail side, yeah, but every time it you know they have a silver slam and it drops below twenty bucks, you start seeing um, metal disappear, and that's kind of where we are now. And these shortages happen like all of a sudden. You know, J.P. Morgan will jump in and buy a couple million ounces of silver eagles, and all of a sudden, nobody has any silver eagles left. So, I, I think with the latest slam down, we're going to see that pretty soon that the uh, that the silver eagles will start disappearing, and then people move on to other types of coins, and those start disappearing. I um, mean, it's all artificial because of these artificial price distortions. Definitely. I mean, you said in a recent email that 
quote, by definition, falling availability when prices fall sharply is a sign of artificial manipulation. Did you want to explain a little bit more about this? Well, yeah. I mean, if, if you look at supply and demand, as <laughs> if, if you flood a market with silver, you would expect the price to go down, right? Because there's too much silver out there. And the reverse happens. In, and these are in free markets. So if you drop a price of silver, and it's, it has to do with why the price dropped. What, did the price drop because the market was flooded with silver? No, it dropped, dropped because electronic derivatives were dumped on the market, increasing the, the demand for the physical metal because the price was so low. It was completely artificial. Uh, in a free market, if there's too much silver, the price goes down. If there's too little silver, the price goes up. That's the way a free market is supposed to work. But in our day and age where there is no true price discovery and, and 100 times, actually it's more like 350 times the amount of available metal trades on the electronic exchanges, that's where the problem is. And that's, that's where the distortions come in. And, and that's one of the things that will be fixed once this game of the banksters in. One of the things that you've talked about recently is that this recent takedown in the silver market has really convinced you that the manipulation is actually going to end very, very soon. Can you explain why? Well, it's not just the takedown of silver. There are many other factors going into play. Some of the biggest ones are the, the passing of the JASTA law, which gives the, the uh, U.S. victims, basically, and the families of the victims of 9-11 the right to sue Saudi Arabia for their involvement in 9-11. And, and why that is such a big deal is because the way that the U.S. had set up the petrodollar, the petrodollar was, program was set up by Kissinger in the 1970s. A deal was struck with Saudi Arabia to buy U.S. oil and U.S. or buy their oil, the Saudi oil, in U.S. dollars only. And what that did was create an artificial demand for the U.S. dollar, thus strengthening the dollar. And they convinced other countries to do it as well. But they also required the Saudis for our protection, military protection, they required them to reinvest those dollars into the U.S. bond market, into the U.S. treasury market, into the U.S. stock market to help boost the stock market. It was a great, you know, kind of reciprocal round and round we go type of thing. That's why the Saudis got so rich. You know, the, the ruling family was dripping in wealth. Um, and it helped the United States because it boosted our markets and it boosted the value of the dollar artificially. By passing this law, Saudi, Saudi Arabia has said, we are going to start selling U.S. assets. So you're going to see the reverse happen where they sell U.S. dollars, sell U.S. treasuries, sell U.S. stocks. And that is a, a huge deal. And you lump that in with what's going on uh, of the Justice Department takedown of Deutsche Bank and all other <laughs> problems with Deutsche Bank. You get a, a very clear picture that it's not only the the crashing of the uh, silver prices, kind of last licks type of thing, but it, much, many more things, many, many more things that are pointing to that they are looking to take down the system. Because remember, if, if the system is taken down, the largest, largest debtor nation in the world is the winner because all electronic debt goes away. And the United States is by far the largest debtor nation. Now, you recently wrote an article about the things that need to happen before the manipulation of the gold and silver markets finally end. Did you want to discuss some of these requirements? The first one on the list is basically ending the excessive concentration. Well, it's it's not these these are the title of the article is uh, uh, 17 requirements for a freely traded silver market structure. So it's not about ha making these things happen before the end of manipulation. What's going to happen is the manipulation will fall apart with the banking system that will end. These 17 suggestions are if we want to restart a market. So the COMEX, with the crash of the banks, the COMEX is going to shut down. The LBMA is going to shut down. All the other markets are going to shut down. And the question is going to become, do we restart this market, these markets in the same corrupt way that they're trading today, or do we change them? And my recommendation, this was written to the, for the F SEC, the CFTC, and the, uh, the U.S. Mint. All these were suggestions of how to restart the system. So, yeah, if, if you want to talk about them, yeah, you have to end excessive concentration. You can't have a, a handful of, of bankers that control 
all the derivatives of, of the silver market that is completely against commodity law. And but they, they've been been given a pass by the CFTC because it's part of controlling the the unbacked fiat monetary system. You got to control prices, so they've been given a pass. If we want to restart things, yeah, that's one of the main things you need to stop is the excessive concentration. Definitely. And I guess what are, uh, there are actually 17 of the requirements that you said. What are some of the most important? And could you ex- explain those for our viewers? Sure. I, I think the most important ones are um, require public position disclosure so that there's no more secrets. And I know the banksters you know, <laughs> are like laughing at this because it ha- makes no sense in today's market because everybody wants to hide their position. But in a, a post-crash market, there can't be any more criminality. You can't hide anything you're doing or people will not participate in that market and it won't be allowed to even be established. So, yeah, I, I think everybody should know everybody else's position. That makes it a more true and fair market. If J.P. Morgan wants to go in and dump a billion ounces of electronic silver on the market, that should be known who did the dumping, what the purpose of that dumping was and why. That kind of stuff needs to be open to everybody who's participating in, in the market because right now it's not. And everybody wonders, well, why did silver drop from $50 an ounce down to $30 an ounce in you know, a matter of a couple of weeks or months? It was because these four traders dumped into the market. And then the CFTC needs to go into those four traders, look at their emails, say, was there any collusion between these traders? Was it done for a specific reason? All kinds of things like that. Uh, another big thing, and I think a gigantic thing, especially in the gold market, but also in the silver market, is to look at the current metal, the real stuff, and determine whether or not it is actual metal or if it is uh, <laughs> diluted metal, shall we say. Is it, it, is it molybdenum just covered in, in silver? Is it... Is it uh, tungsten t- covered in gold. There's so much of that going on now that there basically has to have a, be a global remelt of metals and then a certification of that metal. And I know it sounds crazy today. And the CFTC even said, uh, Michael Dunn was one of the guys who talked about it in a, in a CFTC meeting. After I gave them this, this letter, they said, oh, they're not, we're not going to have, you know, be able to do that around the globe. Yes, you're going to have to after the crash because there's be so much anger at what had gone on in the past. And to restart things, you need truth and you need honesty. So we can't lie about what kind of how much gold we have or the type of gold we have or the purity of gold we have. You can't lie about the amount of silver that's available. People need to know the truth to move forward. And I think that's going to be another very big thing. And then, you know, certifying the metal. We need a, a global certification process that we know what's going into this metal and certifying the warehouses. Um, you know, right now all the ETFs in the world, the, the custodians can do all the, the derivative games they want with it. They don't even have to hold the metal. Truthfully, they can, uh, rehypothecate it a thousand times, especially JP Morgan and the, the SLV ETF. And nobody knows where that silver is held. My, my, Guess is that it's held as part of the inventories of the COMEX and the LBMA, and and that's exactly the problem. You've got four, five, six, seven people claiming the ownership of the exact same metal. Um, that can't happen going forward. After the crash, people are going to demand these seventeen things are a perfect list. I'm I'm sure there's more, um, but this was my list that I put together to change the problems with the current situation and until the cftc admits that there's problems they still haven't even admitted that uh deutsche bank uh conspired to rig the market even though deutsche bank confessed the silver market so yeah there's there's a lot of things that need to change going forward Definitely. And I'll put a link in the description of this video to that article that we're referring to. Now, before we let you go, I was wondering if we could um, look at just the very near future, the election and how you think it'll impact, you know, whoever wins, how you think that'll impact the precious metal markets. Well, it's, it's a very, very scary time for not only the United States, but the rest of the world. Um, this is this is the culmination of the takedown of the bad guys, as I call them. And these guys traditionally have started wars when they get in trouble 
and you can see it right now with uh, the Clinton campaign and, and Obama blaming Russia for absolutely everything and, and calling them uh, <laughs> war criminals. And I mean, this is very, very serious stuff because the next war that if we get in a war with Russia, it, it will be the last war. And that's just the way it is because neither side will will accept a loss. So they'll fire off the nukes and then that's the end of the game. Um, so <laughs> this, there are problems with, uh, obviously huge problems with Clinton becoming the next president. Um, our borders would open up, people would flood into the United States. Uh, we would drive our, our national debt through the roof by giving everybody free stuff. And, but that's what they want. That's, that's the plan of, of Clinton and her, that's her lifelong plan is turn us into a socialist type nation. Um, and you know, if you look at who she hung out with in college and her early years, it's, it's kind of obvious. Uh, they're doing it in Germany right now, opening their borders and look what's happening there. And, and that will, same thing will happen here. And you're, you're talking basically a, a civil war will break out and the United States will be, it's, it will either be fighting Russia and China, or we're going to be fighting ourselves um, and, but there's problems with Trump gets in as well, because, you know, as, as many people say that, that Trump is working with some of the good, I think it's a portion of the good guys that another portion of the good guys are saying, no, this guy is not the answer either, because there's a problem with Trump in that he's a winner and, and he'll win by any means necessary. He's also a cheater and a liar. <laughs> so the, the way America became so great is not by doing such good deeds economically. Read uh, John Perkins' book, Confessions of an Econo Economic Hitman. We cheated, we lied, we stole, and we killed to get where we are. I think Trump will do the same thing, cheat, lie, and steal. Now, he might do it on a, on a more open basis a little bit, but I, I can't see Trump accepting a loss in, in our standing economically. So, yeah, it's a problem. It's a huge problem because I think a lot of the things and a lot of the people he talks to, I think they want to win also. And, and winning in, in by definition for the United States for the past, you know, I would say at least 100 years has been cheating, lying, and stealing. And I don't think our system – you can't build a strong system like that um, unless – yeah, I know Trump's strategy. Now, you know, I've I, <laughs> I've dealt with people who've negotiated with him. He'll he'll make you all buddy buddy in the beginning, and then he'll completely lose it, scream and yell at you. And at the end, he's gonna put your arms around you after he wins. Put your arms around you and say, "Hey, yeah, we're good partners together." He's doing the same thing with his election. He got the first debate out of the way. He was all touchy feely with Clinton, and now he's going. He's a pit dog, and he's 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 a pit bull going after her throat, which you should. Because she's a criminal. So, yeah, we're in deep trouble, I think. And if Trump wins, you got half the nation that literally will go into revolt overnight. So we're choosing different sides of, a, of really bad outcomes as far as either civil war or global war or th there's not much. You know, my suggestion was get uh, <laughs> Bernie Sanders and Donald Trump together and run in, as one ticket to unite the country. But I don't, I don't know. I doubt that will happen at this point in time. Well, Bix Weir, thank you so much for joining us today. Before we let you go, did you want to share with the viewers any last thoughts you had and um, where they can find you online? Uh, sure. I, I think my last thoughts would be if you're a silver investor, hang in there. Get your money out of the system. Sit on your silver and just wait because with the collapse of the system will be a kind of a rejiggering of everything we think money – is today will kind of go away with the click of a mouse and then you're you're going to be stuck with gold and silver if you have it in your hands in your own hands not in an etf and not held by anybody else you're going to be a, a lot better off than anybody else in the world um those would be my last thoughts uh if you're interested in more of this stuff come to road to sign up for free emails that i send out probably <laughs> lately it's been a lot it's, you know once a day or once every couple of days so it's it's very exciting time, but it's very scary, and there's not a lot of good outcomes um, unless we stand up and fix these problems. Once again, Big Spear, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Elijah.